4D Cat in the Hat Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everybody! In today's video I'm going to do an extremely 4D Cat in the Hat that has little items that he's juggling up and over his head that are on a piece of wire. This is such a cool design. Probably not very wearable, but it is inspired by <laughs> this little girl's dress. And I just want to show you her dress because it is so stinking cute and it's got little cats in the hats all around the bottom. And it's adorable. So I hope you guys like it as much as I do. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. Begin with an overlay of an aqua color acrylic. As you can see, I am struggling with my aqua because it's doing that little color burst thing. And if you guys watched my videos, or if you've watched them for a long time, you may have noticed that I, a while ago, you know, about a year ago or so, I was having issues with my all my pastels doing this. And I'm still using the same ones. I do actually have a separate thing. It just hurts me so much to get rid of them. And if I just sort of swipe away the color burst, I can get rid of it. So that is why I suffered through it. And then I'm going to encase the nail with a layer of clear acrylic to make it nice and strong. That initial layer of teal was just for color. It was not to make the nail strong. It's not a strength acrylic. It's not a, a sculpting acrylic. It's just the color acrylic. But then I'm going to be filing the nail into shape with my e-file, starting out with a coarse bit to remove any bulk and just going over the whole thing just to, you know, clean it up a little. And then after I have that done, I'm going to switch to a much finer bit and go over it again to smooth it out and make sure it is nice and easy to work on top of. So then on a nail form backing, I know that you can see a little preview of stuff that's happening eventually, but I'm going to be sculpting my cat's arms with white. So there's no really elbow in them per se, it's just like a little swoopy line. So start out by sculpting that. You want two of them, you want them to be as close to the same size and thickness as you can, and the same length. So just work on sculpting those like so. They don't obviously have to be perfect, but... Sculpting them as similar as you can is definitely helpful. And then with white acrylic again, you're going to want to sculpt the hands on the end of each arm. So his arms are crisscrossed going across his body. So it almost looks like his hands are backwards, at least at this particular juncture. But that is the reason that they are the way that they are is because his arms go across his body and he's, you know, doing as many tricks as he can. So now with white acrylic, I'm going to begin sculpting my cat. And bear in mind the shape, or this not the shape, but the size that you sculpted his arms, you want them to be proportionate to the size that you sculpt your cat and the hat. I'm going to begin with his body, right in the middle of the nail. And depending on the length of your nail, you may have room to do more details than I did on the nail, or you may not be able to do as many as I did. So it depends on how much space that you've allotted yourself. So if you do have more space on your nail than I did, I would definitely recommend, because at this particular point, he is also balancing on a beach ball. And I ran out of space and didn't have space for that. But if I did, I would definitely make it so that he was bouncing on the ball while he's, you know, holding up the fish and so on and so forth. At his little tail, I also did the first layer of his face. So add the tail off to the side. And guys, this is one of the most time-consuming nail designs I have ever done. Which, it may not really look like it, but there is just so much detail in this cat in the hat. And I don't know if you guys noticed Melody's dress in the intro. But she has a cat in the hat dress, and as soon as I found that dress for her, I, one, fell in love with it, and two, knew I needed to do a nail design that went with it, because that's just the kind of thing that I do. And I also get questions all the time about where do I get my inspiration, and I always say from anything, because you never know what you might look at, and you might think, hey, that could definitely be a nail design. Especially if you're somebody like me that, I don't know, I usually think almost anything could be a nail design, as I'm looking around the room, as I'm doing this intro, I can see like 50 things that I could make into a nail design. It's just, it's a process of training your brain to see possibilities, I believe, is kind of the way that you have to go about doing it. So after you have, um, just keep adding layers to your cat in the hat, and after you have the one leg done, you can go through and add his other leg. He is bouncing on one foot on top of that beach ball, so you want to make sure that you have the other leg bent, and it's kind of curled around his other leg in a fashion that looks very unnatural to me. But just go through and add that second leg, starting out with that L shape or backwards L shape, and then tucking the foot behind his knee. And a lot of the little details that it's harder to kind of grasp how he's standing, you will see later when you start doing the outlines. So there is his foot curled around that other leg, just like that. And if your nail was shorter, maybe you'd end up cutting him off before all of that leg business. 
but if you have the length to add the details I would just make it as detailed as possible and because each little element of what he's doing when you're reading the book he just keeps adding more things so the more things that he's doing that you add into your nail design it just seems to go along with it so then I'm going to be adding a little bit more to his face and the funny thing with Cat in the Hat, this is something I didn't realize. My dad cause does not really like the Cat in the Hat. It's, he says that it gives him anxiety, that the book makes him very anxious. So glue his arms on, like I said, going crisscross across his body. And then with red acrylic, I'm going to start sculpting his hat and his bow. So he's got a bow going just right across his neck like a bow tie. So there that is. And this nail design is so detailed, but it has very very minimal uh, different colors that are used in it. Not like some of them that you, you know, you want to get out every color in your acrylic collection so you have them all on standby. This one just has a couple that you use and it's pretty much white, teal, and red. So then I'm going to be adding his hat just like so. He's got a very uh, seussical hat which is, you know, shocking. Dr. Seuss seussical. And there's that. And just go through and let those set up completely on the nail form backing. You can go through and add as much detail them at this point as you'd like. But you want to make sure that before you try to pick them up and place them on your design that they have nice and nice and cured completely. So there is the hat and just leave that there for the time being. And then I'm going to glue them in place with my nail glue. I would definitely recommend grabbing a little tweezers to help you place them. I always find that a tweezers places things better than my clumsy fingers, especially if I'm using my gloved hand because you never, I don't know, you can't really tell what you're doing when you're using your hand, at least if you're me. But then after I have the hat in place, I'm going to take, and his eyebrows actually go up over the brim of the hat a little bit. So just add those. And then on the nail form backing, I'm going to be sculpting the items that he is juggling. And same thing, depending on how detailed you want to go with this, I did three items, but you could certainly add some. You could add a teapot and a cake and kites. I mean, you could, obviously, if you look at the book, there's so much, so many things that he's messing with that you could sculpt for him to be juggling. So to begin with, I have my little fish bowl, which is that first shape that I created, which was just a white circle to start with. And then I added the little edging on the fish bowl, the rim of the bowl just like so and then I've got the beginning of my book is that weird teal little triangle there and then I'm also going to be sculpting my um, umbrella so the umbrella much like the cat's hat is not a very straight shape it's got a little bit of a curve in it and it is as I will continue to use the word susical so keep it nice and nice and susical and just a little uneven is perfect and then I'm going to be adding the second layer of acrylic to my book. So the reason that first one, that first little triangle that I made was for the back cover of the book. And then this will be for the front cover of the book. Just like that. If you do it this way, you have some extra depth and some different layers to it that give it so much more personality. So be adding those. Just cleaning up the lines here and there with your brush as much as you can. Add the handle to your umbrella. And all of these little pieces are very, very delicate when you make them at this point. So after you have them done so far, just be cautious with them before you add clear acrylic to strengthen them a little bit. It's so easy to break, especially I, the reason I'm mentioning it is that handle of the umbrella is just so tiny and so thin that, you know, you can never be too careful. Then with a coral color, which is one that I forgot to mention in my list of what colors you need, but for the little fish, you're going to want to add him with a nice little coral color in the bowl, just like so. And clean him up and then I'm going to be adding some beads some little glass beads to the back of all of my little pieces that he'll be juggling so starting out with the umbrella I put two on the back of that and then I'm going to put one bead on the back of the other two pieces just because they aren't quite as big I didn't think that they each needed to and definitely using something to help place them is beneficial so I'm using a little floss pick to help with that and then I'm going to be adding some clear acrylic on the back of them this is where I said definitely comes in to help with the strength. So just apply that all over the back, being very, very careful not to fill in the hole of the bead because then you won't be able to string it onto the wire that your cat is using to help him juggle. So just kind of fill in and especially like on the little umbrella, make sure that you definitely cover up that handle. Like I said, you don't want it to break. So just be kind of cautious as you're doing this. And I used a little silicone tool to help me hold these pieces in place because it's kind of difficult. They're very wiggly. Then on the back of my Cat in the Hat's hands, I'm going to be securing a very fine piece of wire to just one of them. So just put it on one, glue it down, and then use some clear acrylic to secure that in place. 
then string all of your little juggling pieces on top of that wire. So I've got first my book, then my fish in the bowl, and then I'm going to be adding on my little umbrella. Then curve your wire around into a nice loop shape and glue it to the back of the other hand. So same thing, take that glue, place it down, hold it for just a second until it really sets up. It may take a little bit, a little more effort to get that one to stick than the first one because it is, you know, working against the force of that curved wire. And secure it with clear acrylic just like you did the other side and then you can sort of shape your wire so it's a really nice smooth curve if you want then i'm going to be brightening up the hat of the cat in the hat with some red paint that's a little bit more of a vibrant shade as well as his bow so just go through and add a little bit more a little more color to those and then with white i'm going to do some highlights i'm going to add the pages in the book just like so add some highlights on my fish bowl just go through, I used white and black paint and I added all of the little details. My white acrylic isn't quite a snowy white, it's more of, I don't know, it's like a, a slightly softer white. So I can highlight it with white paint, but then go through and add stripes across the hat. There's so many fun little details on this cat in the hat that you can just keep going through and adding details. A lot of the shading that's actually done on the cat is done with a series of really thin little black lines. As you can see, I just added some. So that's really fun to do. It makes him look a little bit hairy and just gives him that really classic cat in the hat appearance. So for doing that, I would recommend thinning out your black paint ever so slightly so it's a little easier to work with. It doesn't take much, but just thin it out a touch, especially if you're using a heavier body paint then um, and the one I'm using it would definitely help to have a little bit more water content in it. Add some detail to his hands, outline his arms so you can really see the crisscross action on them. Add a bit more on the other hand, go through and like I said with the little tiny lines add some shading here and there on the cat. And doing those little shaded lines, it's very easy. I know that's kind of a weird technique that you probably, if you've never done a Dr. Seuss character, you may or may not have ever done. And it seems a little strange just to add a whole bunch of little lines but trust me it does turn out very uh i don't know iconic looking for the cat just go through with all of those little lines it makes him look like he's a drawing like he's a drawing come to life sitting there so add those little lines across his tail as well and then add some more details on his hat add his facial features eyes nose so on and so forth eyebrows you can't forget those of course and add a couple little dots on his cheeks for for his little whisker spots fill in his eyes with the brighter white add pupils add a couple whiskers if you want and then you're going to want to go through on your other little juggling pieces and add some details to those with black as well so outline your pages outline the spine of the book with a couple little lines it doesn't have to be too much if you actually look at the cat and hat at the book there isn't really much detail everything is fairly simplistic it's very stylized but it isn't like overly detailed there's no scales on the fish or anything like that so you don't really have to over stress about doing that kind of thing here either got some little details on your fish bowl do outline your fish so that it really stands out it is so small that it isn't necessarily easy to define just because there's just so little space to really work on it but you can add his eye and a couple things add some outlines to your umbrella at this point you can kind of tell that it's an umbrella but it doesn't have that I don't know obvious umbrella look to it so just add a couple little outlines to really separate the handle from the rest of it and that definitely helps that scenario apply some gel sealer over the background to make that really nice and shiny make sure you go in that little triangle between his legs all the way up both sides after that's done cure it and then apply some matte top coat over the cat in the hat and then over your three little pieces and I do want to flip over and spin so that they're backwards, but I actually don't mind that because that kind of looks appropriate. You know how everything is being juggled and upside down and, you know, I think it worked out. So I hope you guys like this design as much as I do. I absolutely love how cute this turned out. It's one of my favorite 40 designs because there's just so much to do with it and it's so iconic and classic. So if you decide to do a recreation, please take me. I would love to see them and I will see you in my next video. Bye!